<laughs> and it poured across the entire floor of the bus, soaking everyone's bags. Three. Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe. Today we're gonna go through how to travel with whiskey. Any whiskey drinker that you're out and about traveling the world, internationally, domestically, what have you, you stumble across a whiskey opportunity that you don't have back at home and you wanna bring it home. This is more complicated than it should be, but we're gonna show you the do's and the don'ts and then also one dollar thing from Amazon that makes this way, way easier. This episode brought to you by the Wizard of Ads Partners. These are marketing professionals of various areas of expertise that specialize in turning small businesses into big businesses. As with most things in life, it all comes down to finding the right fit. So go to wizardofads.com to check out the various professionals and their areas of expertise. Also free articles and advice. So first, we're gonna drink some whiskey. So I poured you a Dalmore, but this is a duty-free okay. special edition. So duty-free, these what? are basically the releases in the airports that you don't necessarily get your hands on in regular retail outlets, yeah? And duty-free does not mean that there's no sh involved in the process. It means there's no taxes involved. What do you mean sh Duty. Really? You made a duty joke? <laughs> so this is this is more complicated than it needs to be. There's not only the logistics of packing whiskeys to make oh, sure yeah. they don't, you know, you know, turn into a giant hot glassy whiskey mess. There's laws involved. Let's start with saying that the easiest thing is just get in your car and drive somewhere. <laughs> because Getting any bottles that you want, as many as you want, and carting them around right. in a car, very, very easy. And the only thing you have to worry about is open container loss. Most importantly, I think most people are thinking about airplane travel. Yeah. yeah. That's by uh, far the most common way to travel somewhere where you discover whiskey you probably can't get and need to get it home. We'll hit train, we'll hit bus, but let's focus the majority of our time on traveling in an airplane. Yeah. So when it comes to trains, this is going to be the most flexible easy way to travel with yeah. whiskey. You can bring in... Unless you're driving in your own car. It's more flexible than that. Because if you got a sleeping car, uh -huh. you can drink on the train. All your alcohols in your private little car. I'm only traveling can... Amtrak from now on. Right. I'm saying. <laughs> uh, and if you have like a public space, mm -hmm. then you can't drink your own whiskey there. But they do have bars there. That's true. So have you ever ridden a train? Yeah. Yeah, I've done Amtrak from here to Dallas. Delightful. Buses, they take a hard line more often than not. It's gonna yeah. vary from carrier to carrier. But though. just plan on not getting any alcohol. They do have like these private smaller buses now. It's not the big oh, carriers online. like- Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. They start lining like, beer. They, and they got like out. recliners in there. Yep, internet. Oh, so the big carriers are gonna have some rules so strict it's probably gonna be no. But the smaller operators- but the independents. Oh yeah, those could be like amazing and fun. Yeah. Traveling in an airplane. Yeah. Number one, if you're just gonna try to carry things on, remember that in the US you're still uh, under the 3.4 ounce limit per container. Okay. And that will include sample bottles of alcohol. Okay. If they're sealed okay. and they're in a little Ziploc bag and they're under 3.4 ounces, sure. right? Which is, you know, I mean, a 50 mil bottle is under that. So you can right? carry multiples of these? I think it's individual containers. Right. Right? Because I've had 3.4 combinations of hair, not hair stuff, toothpaste. <laughs> that's going to be limited. What if you find a special release bottle like this? That's right. not going to work. And they're not going to have that in a mini. No. It's not going to come out nearly enough volume to warrant them putting stuff in minis. Yeah. So there's only one chance to get this kind of whiskey and that's to buy it in a duty free shop. Okay. Right, because yeah. then you can have it in your carry-on luggage. What's the carry-on rules? Now there's a legal limit to a tax-free, and that's one liter of alcohol per person. Okay. After that, you have to pay taxes on it, even so, though you bought it in duty-free. So that's duty-free stuff. Mm -hmm. If you brought a carry-on into the airport- Can't do that, it's too full. So I'm saying the only way to get alcohol in the bottle, right. into your carry-on luggage, right. is if you buy it in a duty-free alcohol shop okay. in the airport. Okay. So. Once you've made it through security, right. if you can buy alcohol and fit it into your carry-on, sure. you're fine. You can try and tap dance your way through the hot mess of rules with carry-ons. Easier thing's gonna be to check it. Yes. Okay, so check we- Check it has some pretty clear guidelines. Okay, let's check it. Which is for the US, keep it under five liters. Six and a half, 6.6 6 bottles, roughly? 6.6, .6, yeah. Yeah, so if you figure just keep it to six, uh, you can have them all in one bag. If you got two travelers accounting for it. Sure. Right? So that's- Pretty damn easy. Yeah, so there's the rules, 6.6, mm -hmm. .6, and that mm -hmm. is domestic, is that international? That's international too. Coming into the US, okay. or traveling in the US, okay. if you can hoof it around and you right. can keep it under six bottles per person, you're yeah. fine. Now, honestly, they're probably not gonna check. <laughs> I've heard any number of stories of people talking about like, traveling to 
um, Japan and Scotland and, and yeah. India. And Coming they, back with like 20 something bottles right, of alcohol. And they had zero issue. It sounds like it's very often going to come down to the human beings that you interact with. What kind of mood are they in? It's and, the ability to cover their ass. The law is a fallback law right. that someone can use to stop you if they think that they're mad. The logistics though. Because I think a lot of people, they're willing to, they find an interesting bottle. I'm not going to do hours of research to make sure this is checking all the boxes here. I just want to make sure I got a pretty good shot putting this bottle in, not the carry-on, right. in my luggage and it being safe and sound whenever I get back home and I open it up. Simple version, a bottle carry suitcase. So they have actual suitcases. Yes, yes they do. Designed for yes. carrying. Yes, they do. This is a case designed for traveling yes. with alcohol. Yes, here, so, uh, slide that zipper around to my side, would you? Yes. Oh, yeah? Right? And then... Oh, yeah. wow. This is where I keep my super special secret stash. This case cost about five times as much as these bottles combined. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the case was not cheap. Let's okay. just put it that so way. So how much was the case? I mean, case this case, I think I got it on sale for like $250. And what's the brand? What are we looking at here? Vingard. Vingard. Yeah, this one specifically is Vingard. Okay, so basically it has foam cutouts. Yeah, now they're actually, the foam cutouts are better designed for wine than they are whiskey. But you can remove inserts to make it fit. If something's tall, you can pull out that. Yeah. This case is the one that people are regularly using and swearing by. Yeah. Okay. This is highly well reviewed. We took this to Ireland and back. Yeah. And had no problems whatsoever. And we filled it. Yeah, we did fill it with whiskey. Legitimately. Yeah. I just want to show you how easily one-handed that wheels around. Now that's probably beyond. The desire, how many people really travel enough right. carrying alcohol well, to spend $300 on an alcohol I mean, specific suitcase? You gotta be hardcore or like damn near a professional yeah. to warrant that much investment in the moving of bottles. Now these days, yeah. it is totally attainable and common for people to buy relatively inexpensive hard case luggage. I got this one at Walmart for like $40. I mean, this isn't really hard case. It looks like hard case. It's not hard, hard case. It's just more than a backpack. The things you wanna look out for though, you got like these really hard bars. So it comes, it basically turns into a game of potential pressure points. Yep. Whenever guys are flinging, like literally, you looked out the window. Oh yeah. We're growing! <laughs> Doing shot puts. Yeah, like 10, 15 yeah. feet onto a conveyor belt and then they get crushed by all these But I've known a lot of people who have sworn right. by the ability, their ability to wrap clothes around whiskey and normal luggage and never right. have anything break. But if you ever get cases, um, like I do, I do like a lot of uh, equipment packing. You got this stuff called pick and pluck foam. Oh, so you can like cut it down to size. Right. And oh, it's got grid squares. Yeah. That's cool. But basically, you form any kind of shape that you want. But the more and more you use this, the more loose and worn out these individual segments get. If it's just a very, you know, once or twice well, yeah. trip. Can you buy that in only a piece at a time, or you have to buy it in like commercial yeah. quantities? No, you can buy pick and pluck foam by right. itself. Uh, the other thing is, you mentioned wrapping clothes. I think there is a specific article of clothing that is capable of withstanding the unbridled power. Jock strap? <laughs> Behold the tube sock. <laughs> honestly, like socks are made to give a little bit of extra cushion. Yeah. <laughs> a little. Now look at this. Right here? Yeah. It's a perfect little cabinet. Yeah. A little crevasse. Uh, if you don't think this will do enough, this is going to be really important. We're dropping that bottle. Because we're going to have a durability test later, and you're going to want this to work. <laughs> Feel that. Feels like a bottle. Industry. It what How many you want to go? You get all these socks. <laughs> I got a lot more. Now you know what actually is really in, uh, inexpensive. Actual inflatable wraparound things that I'm oh, going to yeah. put on the screen right now. You can get them really cheap from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, they're for specifically for bottles or uh, glass containers. You can get a 16 pack for like 12 bucks, and uh, they pack um, flat. Yes, so you don't have to like, they can you just be- Yeah, when you travel in, they take up minimal space. Right, and then it's just you know, only inflated whenever you put them in your things around the bottles. Those work so well. Uh, so let's do all types of testing for speed and durability and whatever the crab else we want to do. <coughs> so this test. <laughs> yeah, we can zip. Uh. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> So this test is going to be the large suitcase durability test. And the reason why we have Alex in here is because there's nothing quite as effective as the human hand. So we're gonna have him holding it inside. I'm 
I'm gonna need you to sit down and fast your safety belt. This is a big rough part coming up. Are you ready? No. <laughs> no, that's good. Please. All right. It's really hot in here. <laughs> you need to catch. No. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? No. Did you make it? Bottle good? Yeah, it's good. All right, I'll see you later. <laughs> to the next test, Alex. So, what are we gonna use for the drop test, we're Daniel? Gonna, we're gonna use Southern Comfort. Southern Comfort. Yeah. But we're keeping it classy with the well, classy. Well, it's New Orleans, you know. Classy black. Well, it worked that shaft. Sure. You like to travel with costumes? Yes. All right. Well, here we go. You shove it inside of an eagle. Shut up, the eagle. Well, that's not classy. Because <laughs> that is that's classy. <laughs> okay. So, drop test from, what is this, like 60 feet? Well, that's five stories. So, probably four. TSA, I'm going to make you proud! I think that survived. Oh, dude, it shattered. <laughs> Please, hold on a second. Did oh. I just make all of our costumes smell like Southern Comfort? Yeah. Alex, come back up here. We got one more thing to try. <laughs> all right. Good to go. <laughs> you want to get that in? Yeah. No. Ah. Oh. All right. What? One. <laughs> Two, three! That's unfortunate. Daniel, I think something tragic may have happened. I think we may have lost a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! You okay? The thing that matters? You owe me a whiskey.